welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us again here at KAKM for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. On yesterday's satellite imagery, there was a frontal, a frontal system moving through the southeast coastal rain, changing over to showers. Back to the west here, we had low pressure near the Barren Islands with uh, Shower activity across Kodiak Island, the southern Kenai Peninsula cleared out a little up over Cook Inlet, but a lot of cloudiness up over the central and eastern interior with some clearing back to the west and then up here to the northwest coming out of the Russian Far East, the next system, which today is moving southeastward and uh, bringing some rain to the Pribilof Islands and up along just approaching the southwest coast this afternoon and the clouds extending back up over St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, a lot of showery conditions here from the eastern Aleutians along the uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, but uh, clearing out there over Bristol Bay. Very nice day over Prince William Sound. Uh, clear skies, mostly clear skies, and partly to mostly sunny skies over Cook Inlet and parts of the Kenai Peninsula, as well as the Copper River Basin. That low that was over the Barrens yesterday now tracking eastward to uh, over the just south e southwest of Yakutat, uh, bringing some showers, isolated thunderstorms into that area. Showers on the increase over the northern panhandle, uh, more scattered down to the south where sunshine was a little more prevalent down toward Annette. On the chart today, there's the low center right there uh, southwest of Yakutat. Actually, they had some heavy rain showers and isolated thunderstorms. Uh, during the day today with, uh, again, showers that decrease as you head south there along the Panhandle. Pretty nice day up over the Copper River Basin area. And then some showers along the western Alaska range of rain or snow, depending on your elevation and the time of day. Otherwise, just a mostly cloudy day over much of interior Alaska with uh, scattered to isolated or isolated to scattered rain or snow showers there, but mostly in the form of snow here through the Brooks Range and then some widely scattered or isolated flurries along the eastern Arctic coast with uh, light northeast winds or east northeast winds of about uh, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, a lot of some sunshine here up along the northwest coast uh, there from Kivalina down in toward Kotzebue Sound as well as uh, some breaks over the Seward Peninsula. Here's that next system moving south of St. Lawrence Island kicking the winds up from the west, uh, gusting 30 to 35 miles per hour with a little bit of rain there over the Pribilof Islands. Not a heavy amount of rain, just a few hundredths of an inch falling this afternoon at St. Paul. And some uh, scattered shower conditions along the Alaska Peninsula or northwest winds of 15 to 30 miles per hour extended from southwest Kodiak Island all the way out to Cape Sarachev and a few scattered showers over the eastern Aleutians and clouds with lighter winds over the western and central Aleutian chain. And the forecast for tonight, see that system brings rain into the southwest coast here over the Kuskokwim Delta. Air, periods of light rain at times here will spread into the Alaska Peninsula on down with a trailing edge just coming across the eastern Aleutians. Look for scattered showers and an increase in the west-northwest winds there across the Pribilof Islands. Or actually not much of an increase, but they'll turn more northwest uh, later tonight. A areas of snow showers there over the maybe the Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley areas up into the Brooks Range. And that will extend back to the eastern Arctic coast, but amounts uh, not really amounting to much. Uh, just some very light snow up there with some areas of fog over the eastern Arctic coast. And then uh, some clearing back here to the northwest and across the Seward Peninsula, as well as over the Kuskokwim Valley areas on up to the north. 
hit and miss. It'll probably mostly be miss rain and snow showers, mostly along the mountainous terrain here of the Alaska range and then up over the White Mountain areas. And then this uh, system still off the coast, so showers uh, in the forecast there for the Panhandle for tonight from Dixon Entrance all the way up into Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay to about Skagway, but dry conditions here, variably cloudy along the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, as well as South Central Alaska, a dry evening and overnight period with some partial clearing. And the areas that see the clearing will probably drop uh, back down below freezing just like you did this morning. And the forecast for tomorrow, that system moves to just near or south of Kodiak Island with the bulk of the rain staying mostly to the south. So it'll be kind of showery there for Kodiak and then some scattered showers back up over Bristol Bay and along the Alaska Peninsula. Gale warnings out for the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow. Look for those northwest winds up to 35 knots and then lightening up as you head north along the southwest coast and then some sunshine possible here over the Seward Peninsula and again up over the northwest part of the state. Not much change, mostly cloudy skies uh, for the interior with again isolated to scattered rain or snow showers, mostly along the Alaska range and up over the central interior areas back across the uh, Tanana Valley. And then with low pressure still off the coast here, a trough uh, showers are pretty likely here across the southeast coast once again and then uh, some maybe isolated activity here along the North Gulf Coast. But again, pretty dry conditions for the Copper River Basin, partly sunny skies, isolated showers possible along the mountains here for South Central Alaska and the Kenai Peninsula area. And then back to the west here, the next system over the Russian Far East, we'll see on Monday that drops uh, southeastward and uh, pretty quickly here with the northwest jet there, but it's going to come southward or southeastward farther to the west. So that'll be bearing down mostly on the Alaska Peninsula with rain. Rain will come across the Pribilof Islands tomorrow night, change to showers on Monday and spread down across the peninsula and just uh, isolated showers here. Should be a dry day with most of the moisture staying to the west of Bristol Bay. And again, that same pattern, scattered rain and snow showers here for the Alaska Range, maybe the Wrangell Mountain areas back into the Kuskokwim, but probably again, more mist than hit and some scattered snow showers up over the Brooks Range area. And that same pattern there with the northeast winds, east northeasterlies along the eastern Arctic coast. There's a chance of some isolated snow showers with areas of fog, mostly on the eastern side. And with an upper trough still off the coast here, it looks like showers are pretty likely again over the Panhandle and then an area extending back across the Gulf of Alaska, staying mostly to the south of the coastline, but cutting in across the southern Kenai Peninsula. So Seward, maybe over to Homer and Seldovia will have a chance of showers, but should be partly sunny for Northern Cook Inlet. Into the Susitna Valley there, Copper River Basin, mostly sunny. These rain and snow showers, probably over the Wrangell Mountains and the Eastern Alaska Range area. And that uh, low pressure area, moves to just southwest or actually west of the Queen Charlotte's with most of the rain at least initially staying to the south. Temperatures today along the Panhandle were mostly in the mid to upper 50s. Actually a net reached 60 degrees this afternoon before some uh, clouds and showers moved in during the afternoon. Upper 40s over the northern Panhandle, just 45 degrees at Yakutat. With more sunshine, temperatures in the 50s here along the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. 54 at Seward, 55 at Cordova, one of the warmer locations. Uh, Cook Inlet in South Central Alaska, mostly upper 40s were the rule with 50 degrees at Gulcana. 45 at Northway, Delta just 39, Fairbanks uh, edging up to 43 this afternoon with Tanana at 40. And then in the 30s here up over the uh, upper Yukon Valley there at Fort Yukon, 37 degrees, 38 at Bettles, but just 21 degrees up at Anatovic and 32 at Arctic Village. Along the Arctic coast, temperatures in the upper 20s, two lower 30s there um, with lower 30s more prevalent here on the west side, but still below freezing all the way down to Cape Lisburn. Upper 30s here over the northwest and the Seward Peninsula area with upper 30s down into the lower Yukon River Valley area and uh, lower 40s over the Yukon and Cusco Deltas. Upper 40s also for the Pribilofs, lower 50s out over the central and western Aleutians, otherwise upper 40s, 48, pretty common temperature here across the Alaska Peninsula with 46 at uh, Chignik, 45 up at King Salmon, Kodiak had 49. Lows for tonight in the 40s here across the southeast coast, otherwise uh, upper 20s to mid 30s here across south central Alaska in the Copper River Basin. Teens and lower 20s through the Brooks Range with uh, mostly mid-20s, lower to mid-20s up along the Arctic coast. Uh, 30s 
lower 30s or mid 20s lower 30s here over the northwest and the Seward Peninsula with uh, upper 20s across much of the southwest interior but milder out along the coast with 40 degrees of forecast low for Macoriak and uh, 40s for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs tomorrow about like today here in the north from the Brooks Range to the Arctic coast and mostly in the upper 30s to lower 40s through the Tanana Valley. Lower 40s again here over the southwest interior but upper 40s for Bristol Bay, lower 50s for the Panhandle. And for flying weather, areas of marginal VFR here for the southeast coast tomorrow. That'll extend up and along the Alaska Range areas with mostly VFR over south central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast. Kodiak Island, southwest interior looking really good tomorrow. Marginal VFR here along and north of the Alaska Peninsula areas, but uh, marginal VFR possibly to start with over Kodiak Island, now shift off to the south. Aries IFR in the Brooks Range, and then more IFR way out over the Bering Sea, but it looks VFR here for the eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs right up to the southwest coast. For the passes, Anatovic, IFR in the northern approach, otherwise marginal, that same forecast good for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR tomorrow, rainy, occasionally marginal, especially on the western entrance. Windy marginal VFR lowest on the north entrance and marginal also for Isabel and Mentasta right along the Alaska Range. Tanita VFR and Portage also VFR. Chilkoot and White looking marginal. Freezing levels 4,000 feet here up over the Gulf of Alaska with 2,000 feet in across the Yukon Delta. Northeast Bristol Bay and then kind of hugging the coastline down the southeast coast there and uh, Still a gradient out here over the Bering Sea, 2,000 feet up over the northern areas, and then 4 to 8,000 feet onto the southwest. Up, uh, icing, uh, occasional, possibly some mixed icing here above 4,000 feet over the southeast coast. And then rime icing coming across the Alaska Peninsula tonight and early tomorrow morning with the bulk of that shifting south of the area, both Kodiak Island, so things will be improving during the day here for the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay. Winds aloft, uh, one upper low still here, right near Yakutat tomorrow uh, during the afternoon. This next one sliding southeastward across Bristol Bay and toward Kodiak Island, the main northwest jet here, 80 to 100 knots, well south of uh, mainland Alaska. So we're kind of locked in this pattern, so we're going to stay kind of in a cool pattern, a little showery, but nothing much really going on. And for 9,000 feet, uh, pretty good northwest winds here, north and northwesterlies, 25 up to 35 knots across the Alaska Peninsula, lighter and more east northeasterly in over the southeast interior, and gen generally southerlies 10 to 15 for the panhandle, and northeast on the light side up over the Arctic coast, and lighter winds continuing there over the western Aleutians. And at 3,000 feet, uh, Northwest release 20 to 35 knots, strongest here coming across the Alaska Peninsula to about uh, southwestern Kodiak Island at 25 knots and kind of a northeast breeze here at 15 to 20 knots in over the mainland areas. And southwest only at about 10 knots there with this low up off the north coast there, but really not much of a gradient associated with it. The winds will stay light and winds also stay light with high pressure over the western Aleutians. And then the next wind max here, 30 knots associated with this system that'll be cutting to the southeast uh, tomorrow night and into Monday. And for turbulence tomorrow, occasional moderate chop here from Nunavak Island southward down across the Alaska Peninsula, just catching the eastern Aleutians there uh, to about Unalaska. And most of the bumpiness staying south of Kodiak Island. Of course, the southern part of the island will be the most prone area, seeing some occasional light to isolated moderate chop, and then some spotty areas up over the upper Yukon Valley, maybe the western Brooks Range. A little bumpy, especially for smaller aircraft. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Congratulations, you did it. After long hours of training and study, and a few lessons you thought were your last, you earned your private certificate. Of course, you plan on being very careful. You know, low-time pilots have higher accident rates compared to higher-time pilots. And that's not surprising. Higher-time pilots have more experience. Right now, you could probably hold your own against just about any VFR pilot after all the training and prep work you did for the check ride. But flight time often falls dramatically after the intense preparation that precedes a flight test. And lack of recent experience, combined with lack of total hours, means your skills will erode rapidly. And that's why you're taking extra precautions, like that new handheld GPS you bought yourself. 
Thanks to state-of-the-art equipment like this, even a pilot in a rented 150 can have the same degree of positional awareness as the captain of a business jet. After training with VORs as your primary source of electronic navigation, a GPS can really simplify the job of getting where you're going. And unlike VOR, if one satellite goes out of service, there is usually enough redundancy to continue on your way, so the system is more reliable. Of course, nothing is foolproof. Without external power, the batteries may wear out while en route. But that's not a problem if you've got spares on hand. For pilots who never flew in the pre-GPS days, it's hard to appreciate how much it's changed en route navigation. Just a few years ago, pilots had to navigate VOR to VOR to be certain of their location. GPS is just one of the technologies making flying safer and more fun. GPS receivers are filled with screen after screen of information, scalable moving maps, trip planner, CDI, and more. Information that makes flight planning and tracking a breeze. This leaves the pilot in command free to enjoy the serene, tranquil rhythms of traveling by air. What's this? Low batteries? Oh no. Oh no. Oh boy. But you've got those extra batteries, don't you? Well, sure you do, Dave. You don't mind if I call you Dave, do you? You're wondering who I am, right? Well, I'm the little voice that goes off in your head to remind you what you're supposed to be doing to keep you out of trouble. Now, about those batteries, Dave, where are they? That's right, stowed in the baggage area. They might as well be 100 nautical miles away. Hey, don't blame me. I was busy watching to make sure you did the pre-flight correctly. Well, you weren't really relying on the GPS that much, were you? You remember what it said on the startup screen, don't you? That's right. Unless it's certified for instrument flight, a GPS isn't supposed to be used as your primary means of navigation. Okay, just use the VOR. Is that a flag? Yeah, there's a flag. Are you out of range? Or is the VOR out of service? or maybe just unusable at your altitude and bearing. What did the notums say? You didn't get the notums? Dave, where are you? It's surprising how quickly those familiar landmarks disappear. That's one of the reasons you were taught to plot and track your route. Many pilots don't bother to carefully plot their route after their check ride, and frankly, most of them don't get into trouble but it only needs to happen once to realize the problems it can lead to. You don't know where you are. Guess what I'm gonna do is tune in 121.5. Hey, 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 Dave. You're gonna broadcast on the emergency frequency? Wait a minute. You're forgetting the first rule. Don't panic. You may be lost, but is this an emergency? How much fuel do you have? Yeah, well, fuel's not so bad. You've got plenty of fuel. This is no emergency. If you don't know where you are, your fuel state is always the first thing to check, because that determines your options. It can spell the difference between a minor blunder and a true emergency. But this isn't an emergency, not yet. This is an opportunity for you to learn, to learn how to reorient yourself and regain positional awareness. A GPS malfunction isn't the only thing that can lead to loss of positional awareness. Haze can reduce visibility, making pilotage difficult, or ceilings may be lower than expected, forcing you to fly at altitudes where you can't get good VOR reception. Winds may not be as forecast and can blow you off course. An electrical or other failure could knock out instruments you rely on for navigation. 
Growing darkness can make navigating by ground reference difficult, and weather could have moved in, making the route you had planned unflyable. The sectional chart, not an electronic device, should be your primary tracking tool. And no matter what navigation equipment you're using, pilotage should remain a constant. Stick to the basics taught in your flight training. Routes should be drawn out on the chart. Landmarks and VOR radials noted before flight. Times at checkpoints should be noted. Anticipate what's coming next and be looking for it. If you get lost, fuel is the most critical concern. If fuel is low, taking prompt action is essential. You know that, right Dave? Make no mistake, if there's any doubt, don't be afraid to declare an emergency. Don't wait until it's too late. Make the call and get help. And set power to best economy or maximum endurance. You did remember to lean the engine, didn't you? Remember, you can't even get close to book fuel consumption if you don't lean properly. Many pilots just out of flight training fly with full, rich mixtures. Fuel isn't the only critical consideration in whether to call for help. Other factors also come into play. The amount of daylight you have left, surrounding terrain and obstacles ahead, also play a role in judging the best response to the situation. For example, if you were flying through a mountainous area and unsure whether you're north or south of a pass you're supposed to fly through, you can't plunge ahead and try to figure out where you are later. After you've determined that there's no immediate emergency, you could use pilotage, radio navigation, and dead reckoning to reestablish your position. The first big question here, how lost are you? That's right, there are degrees of being lost. Do you have a general idea of your location? Is this a situation where you think you know where you are, but the landmark is lost? Or are you totally clueless? Welcome back. Well, kind of a variable wind condition up here on the north coast at about 15 knots. Otherwise, southwest to westerlies, 15 knots with seas 7 feet here for the remainder of the coastline. Over the southern and central inside waters, southeasterlies of 15 knots. Lynn Canal south at 15 with seas 3 feet. And the outlook for Monday, still no change up here for Lynn Canal. Winds the same, but northerlies at 20 knots with four foot seas through Stevens Passage. And for Clarence Strait, southeast winds increasing to small craft advisory levels there with seas at about five feet. Otherwise, southwesterlies here for the south coast, only 10 to 15 knots. And pretty light east, southeast, and easterly winds for the north coast. And for Prince William Sound, light variable winds tomorrow, northern Cook Inlet. Northerly is at about 10 knots with southwest 15 here for the North Gulf Coast. And for the Barren Islands, small craft advisories, same thing for Kodiak Island. Uh, westerly winds at about 25 knots and northwest 20 knots for Kamishak Bay. And then for uh, Monday, you've got small craft advisories continuing here for the waters east of Kodiak Island. Up across the Barrens, it'll be northerly. Northwest 30 knots for Kamishak Bay and otherwise northerly winds at 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet. Light variable winds for the North Gulf Coast and light winds also mostly from the northeast for Prince William Sound. And for the western Gulf Coast, northwesterlies at about 20 with uh, seas out here running 4 to 6 feet, as high as 8 feet there for Kodiak. And for Bristol Bay, northwest at 20 tomorrow, but uh, gales here for the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, 35 knots with seas 10 to 13 feet. Westerlies at 25 here for the water southwest of Sitkanak. And then those pick up to westerly at about 30 knots and small craft advisories here for the Alaska Peninsula for those northwest winds with nine foot seas. Northwest 25, so small crafts also out for Bristol Bay on Monday with seas at seven feet. Out over the Aleutians for the eastern Aleutians tomorrow, northwesterlies uh, up to gale force there across the Fox Islands, otherwise northwest 20 for the central Aleutians, and lighter winds westerly 15 to maybe 20 knots here out toward uh, Shimmy and Kiska. And then those turn southwest at about 20 there for Monday, westerly winds on the light side, but picking up to about 20 knots from the west-northwest there for the central Aleutians. And uh, west-northwest winds here for the Fox Islands at 20 to 25 knots with 6 to 7 foot seas. And moving up along the southwest coast, north of Nunavak Island, northerlies at 30 knots. Small craft advisories also south of Nunavak Island uh, with northwest winds there. Northwest, 30 knots for the Pribilofs, northwest 20 knots there for St. Matthew Island. 
And small craft advisory is also out for St. Lawrence Island with seas running 6 to size 12 feet here for the Pervilofs. And then for Monday, uh, northerly winds here north of Nunavak Island, 20 to 25 knots back up across St. Lawrence Island. Still got small craft advisories there south of Nunavak Island and lighter winds in store for the Pervilofs on Monday, just 10 knots from the north and northeasterlies for St. Matthew Island. For the Arctic coast, uh, 10 knot winds here for the central and eastern coast. And then picking up a little bit here from Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, we've got small craft advisories out for north to northeast winds of 25 knots. And then taking a look at uh, Monday's outlook, uh, those will lighten up. Still about 20 knots here from Wales to Cape Thompson. And then uh, east northeasterlies, 10 to 15 knots for the western coastline and east northeast at about 10. So pretty light here for the areas on off to the east with seas running two to three feet. And for tonight, uh, showers here with the low center and a trough coming still out to the west. So showers in the forecast here for the Panhandle. And those will be out for tomorrow and on Monday as well. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies, uh, scattered isolated rain or snow showers, mostly over the mountainous terrain like the Alaska Range and up over the White Mountains. Scattered snow showers over the Brooks Range area, maybe down in the Koyukuk, possibly Kobuk Valley. Isolated uh, snow showers along the eastern Arctic coast. Area of rain pushing southeastward into the southwest coast here and across uh, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. That moves south of Kodiak Island, so some showers there, scattered showers over Bristol Bay, more showers in store for the Panhandle, and the next system up here to the northwest uh, comes southward across the Pervilofs tomorrow night, rain into the Alaska Peninsula on Monday. Otherwise, no change for the interior, mostly cloudy or scattered rain and snow showers and more showers in store for the Panhandle. Have a great day. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.